Near the southeastern edge of Albuquerque, New Mexico, adjacent to the Kirtland Air Force Base, a collection of old planes, missiles, submarine sails, and artillery sits baking in the hot desert sun. It's a monument to our wartime history with nuclear weapons, and it's one of many exhibits at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. Welcome. It's nice to have you here in the museum today. This is the largest museum about this topic in the world. Jim Walther is the executive director of the museum, and many of the exhibits are devoted to the Manhattan Project, which was developed in nearby Los Alamos. But we do have Oppenheimer's limousine here. We have the only full-scale replica of the Trinity Test Tower here. Uh, Fat Man and Little Boy bomb shapes are concurrent copies from 1945. They're not made later. They're the real ones. This is Trinitite. This is the, the blast effect of the extreme heat of the Trinity test turned the sand to glass. There are big sections about nuclear medicine and the basic science around radiation. Our world is full of radiation. The sun pounds us with energy each second of the day. Industry. Our homes, our tools and appliances, and even our food combine to expose each of us to radiation as we live. Then there are the exhibits on how we enrich nuclear fuel and transport nuclear waste, as well as some displays about the next generation of nuclear technology, sponsored by none other than the nuclear industry itself. In the background, you can hear the sounds of an air raid siren, the type used to warn of a nuclear attack. But I'm not here for the science or the history or to duck and cover. I want to feast my eyes on the museum's pop culture collection. We have automobiles here, we have toys, we have games, magazines, movie posters, t-shirts, an indication of how atomic energy was taken up by Madison Avenue and brought into our consciousness through the things we bought and consumed and saw and used. In the aftermath of World War II, Americans became fascinated with all things atomic. In the 1950s, kids could get nuclear-themed toy trains. And these are ore cars that say radioactive, danger, radioactive. Did you know that if you were a Boy Scout in the 1960s, you could learn about nuclear science? The Boy Scouts have a merit badge, back then called the Atomic Energy Merit Badge, now called the Nuclear Energy Merit Badge. Then there's my personal favorite. You might remember back in episode three when I mentioned the Gilbert U-238 Atomic Energy Lab. This toy lab kit, uranium included, that kids could use to learn about nuclear science. My dad actually had one growing up, along with a collection of radioactive rocks that he kept in his bedroom. And the museum has three of these kits stashed in their collection. They're pretty rare. Mm -hmm. They go for like 7,000 bucks on eBay. What's in there? Well... There were a few types of radioactive material that you could use to do the experiments that are in here. There was a type of a Geiger counter. There was a comic book that came with it called Dagwood Splits the Atom with a forward by Leslie Groves. We also heard about this briefly in episode three. General Leslie Groves oversaw the Manhattan Project. So why on earth was he writing the forward to a comic book? Well. The 1940s and 1950s marked the golden age of comics, when they broke into the mainstream and became hugely popular. And what better way to reach the youth, the next generation, America's future, and teach them about atomic energy than to meet them where they were, in the pages of a comic book. I'm Laura Krantz, and this is a special bonus episode of Wild Thing, Going Nuclear, a series about the power of the universe, contained in the tiny little package of the atom, You and I are living in the atomic age. The endless debate over harnessing that power. The mysteries of the universe. And whether we humans are responsible enough to mess with it. Of benefit or of destruction. Of good or of evil. If you'd like to hear the rest of this special bonus episode, consider becoming a premium subscriber. You'll get new episodes early, plus exclusive access to the bonus episodes from all three seasons. Not to mention the warm, fuzzy feeling that comes from being a patron of the arts. Sound enticing? Go to wildthingpodcast.com for more information on how to become a premium subscriber. That's wildthingpodcast, all one word. And thank you. 